Hello friends, Pastor Dave here for our daily devotional. Thanks for joining me on this Tuesday. People in Jesus' time had to make the same decision about him that we make today. What are we gonna do with Jesus? He's too public a figure to be neutral. We have to decide what we think and believe. But it seems like a lot of people then and now make the decision not on the basis of evidence with an unbiased investigation, but they decide what they wanna believe first and then everything fits into that narrative. Let's talk about that on something deeper. In Mark chapter three, we see Jesus at the height of his popularity. There were crowds gathering. In verse 20, it says, then Jesus entered a house and again a crowd gathered so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. So people were hanging on his every word. People wanted to know what he had to teach. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, he is out of his mind. So on the one hand, you've got this crowd that's seen what Jesus has done, and they, they just need to be close to him. They're crowding around him. But then the people who should be loving him and supporting him are just trying to take him back home to put him away because he's out of his mind. And then we have the Jewish leaders. Verse 22, And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebub, by the prince of demons. He is driving out demons. You see, just before this story, Jesus had cast out one more demon from a man who was possessed. And you would think that would be an occasion to say, how wonderful. This man who is acting in a crazy way is now in his right mind. How wonderful that he's been set free. But they would even twisted this around. Well, how do you cast out demons? Well, he must be in league with Satan because he has control over these demons. You see, you can take the same information and you can interpret it two different ways. Did it make sense? No but it fit in with their bias. So verse 23, So Jesus called them over to him and began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. Truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven of all their sins and even the slander they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying he has an impure spirit. One question people always get from this is, if, if there's only one unforgivable sin and that's blaspheming against the Holy Spirit, what is that so that we can avoid it? And I would say you have to look and see what the Pharisees did. They said, he has an impure spirit, that he was in league with Satan. Is calling Jesus satanic? How is that against the Holy Spirit? I guess I would say that the Holy Spirit's job is to draw people to Jesus. And if we reject that call, if we turn our back and don't accept Jesus, then, then we've blasphemed the Holy Spirit. We've called the things of God to be not. That's what we do when we blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Now, of course, nobody's born into faith. So all of us come from a state of unbelief or maybe even disbelief. And then we come to Christ and accept Him. So I don't think... This is saying if you've ever disbelieved, then, then you're lost. I think this is saying if you persist in resisting the Holy Spirit, then one day there will be no sacrifice left. It will all be done. As C.S. Lewis said, when the author of the play walks onto the stage, the play is finished. When Jesus comes back, we've had our chance then to follow him out of love and choice. When he comes back, we'll have no choice. And then it's too late to do it 
by love. Anyway, it goes on. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers? he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Jesus had said that his disciples had to leave everything in this world. Count him to be first of all. Here he's doing the same thing. He's saying, those who are following me, they are my true family. Hopefully, your family members are a part of Christ. Hopefully, your brothers and sisters are your spiritual brothers and sisters as well. But there's no closer bond, or there shouldn't be, than between brothers and sisters in Christ. Here in Jesus' time, all these people saw the same thing. They saw him healing people, teaching about love, casting out demons, doing miracles. Some of them flocked to him. Some people thought he was crazy. And some people reject him and opposed him. You have to make that same decision they made back then. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. I hope you will too. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you sent your son into this world that we could know the God who is transcendent because he became the Emmanuel, the God with us. Thank you, Father, that we have this opportunity to see your character in the flesh. I pray, Father, that those who are listening have already made that choice or will make that choice to follow you completely. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, God bless you all. I love you and I hope you have a great night and great rest of your week. Take care.